And welcome back, Exxon Nation. I am Rob McConnell. We're coming to you from our broadcast center and studios in Hamilton, Ontario, Canada. If you'd like to find out uh, what we have available for you 24-7, 365 on the Exxon Broadcast Network, visit www.xzbn.net. And for the programming on the Exxon TV channel, which is Channel 21 on Simul TV, visit www.simultv.com. Exxon Nation, my guest this hour is George P. Hansen. And uh, some figures in parapsychology have a dual perspective as researcher and skeptic. This especially applies to our guest this hour, who spent eight years carrying out experiments into the guns, Gansfield, remote viewing, and uh, such like, but has also been involved with skeptic groups and uh, is a member of the International Brotherhood of Magicians. George is a moderate critic of parapsychology and pointing out flaws in investigators' experimental methodologies. And uh, joining me now is our guest this hour, George Hansen. And George, welcome to the Exxon. Well, thank you for inviting me. It's always great having someone who wears two hats because, um, you know, I've always been taught there's three sides to every story, his side, her side, and the truth. And with you being our guest tonight, wearing two hats, that means our audience will be able to decide for themselves what is what. Now, first of all, how did you get interested in the paranormal, George? Well, uh, my father claimed to be a dowser. Mm Mm-hmm. Uh, to finding water with, uh, basically, I think he used a crowbar, uh, and it would kind of shake. Now, my mother didn't really believe him. Okay. So we, it was sort of, sort of, sort of a, he, he was pulling her leg. But anyway, he went out in our backyard mm-hmm. and uh, used dowsing and started to dig. Uh, and the neighbors sort of laughed at him. But he got down, I don't know, 15, 20 feet, hit water. Wow. <laughs> so... That kind of opened me up. Oh, maybe there's something here. Mm. Uh, and I was in early teens then, didn't really know what to make of it. Right. And then uh, after I got out of college, uh, there were, I was in Kansas City and took a course on dowsing, just you know for something to do in the evening. And surprisingly enough, it was taught as probably a psychic skill. And in the class, uh, there were a number of people who were involved with the various psychic arts, the psychometry, fortune telling, and the like. Mm-hmm. And this uh, place, I was, it was a free university, and you pay a dollar and you take a course. And so it was fun. So I started taking other courses and really got hooked on the paranormal. Now, this was something kind of odd to me because I was never taught this in any of my physics or engineering classes. So... Uh, I didn't know what to make of it, but uh, I started reading a little bit more and started realizing that there was scientific work being done and decided, well, gee, maybe this is kind of important. And I decided to then uh, take a class out at the University of California at Irvine by a guy named Robert Morris, uh, who was a rather eminent parapsychologist, Mm -hmm. and I just went from there. You're a, you're a professional magician as well. How does parapsychology? Well, I'm, I, I'm not a professional. I'm I'm very much an amateur, and I'm much more interested in the history of magic. So uh, that's so. I studied magic. I've gone to a number of conventions. I, I watched close up and realized, well, gee, magicians can really fool me really easily, and they can do it really well, and I have no idea how they're doing it. <laughs> so okay. that. Uh, made me think about how we impose better controls in experiments. And that was one reason I, I started studying magic. It's also really fascinating to watch, and it's a, it's a fun subculture to hang out with. A lot of gossip and <laughs> backstories and the like. Yeah, my favorite uh, magicians are Penn and Teller. I think they're just fantastic. Oh, they are pretty good. There, there's others who are pretty good. Shim Lim uh, is quite amazing. There, there are a number of really, really good ones. And even people I've people have you've never heard of can really be extraordinary uh, there are magicians magicians who, who only pr- perform basically for other magicians you know i i think well, what gave penn and teller a lot of credibility in my book was when they did their bullshit series well yes uh penn can be a little extreme in some of his views yeah. though. Uh, uh you know we do certainly need skeptics no question about that so how would you, what, what is your definition of a skeptic? Well, um, 
someone who critically examines uh, uh, materials. Now, in, in I'd really like to talk about the trickster because the magician stuff is, is certainly relevant. Yeah, but, but I'd still like for, to get your, your definition of a skeptic. Uh, I don't really have one. Uh, it's not something I really thought about. People who are, because the, the term is used in a whole variety of ways. And it really, there are magicians who are very open to right. the, the paranormal and are very knowledgeable. Uh -huh. uh, and there are others who are rather closed-minded and probably have not read the literature and have not educated themselves. Yeah, the reason I asked you was because in the bio that you sent us, it says some figures, uh, some figures in parapsychology have a dual perspective as a researcher and skeptic. This especially applies to George P. Hansen. So I was wondering what your interpretation of a skeptic was or a definition. Okay, I don't, I don't recall sending that to you, actually. <laughs> uh, I don't know where that came from, but uh, it it's uh, doesn't sound like my wording. So I did send you a list of, of topics we'd like to talk about, spe specifically on the trickster, hmm. because that is really the trickster and magicians are tricksters but the trickster concept is a much much broader topic and it is highly relevant to understanding the paranormal today uh, all right so what is a trickster well that is a very very good question but uh, first of all when i'm asked that i give three answers first of all and the most commonly understood idea is it's a character type found in mythology and folklore literally worldwide. Mm -hmm. Hermes of the Greeks, Mercury of the Romans, Loki of the Norse, Eshu and Legba of Africa, Coyote of the American Indians, the spirit Mercurius of alchemy, Renard the Fox. There are probably a hundred or more tricksters that have been clearly identified. And this is, goes all over the world. It's a very, very old aspect of mythology and folklore. So that's, that's, the, that's the easy definition, and people are probably familiar with at least a few of those characters. The second definition of trickster mm -hmm. is that it's a collection of abstract qualities. For instance, tricksters are typically shapeshifters. They, they disrupt things. They stir things up. They cross boundaries. And they're usually rather ambiguous figures. Uh, they're sort of, are they part of this group or part of that group? They kind of move around, um, boundary crossing. There's something of an insider-outsider. They're kind of a little hard to place sometimes. They're sometimes socially marginal. They sometimes and you will use deceit. That's pretty central to the trickster, but not all trickster figures use deceit, but most of them do. And tricksters are known for violating taboos, crossing boundaries in, in, a, in some sense. Would we say so, that some of the modern-day magicians are tricksters? Oh, yes, yes. Uh, some magicians will present themselves as genuine psychics, mm -hmm. but they use trickery. Now, some of the magicians, though, and I know a number of mentalists, and I've lectured to mentalist groups, some of the mentalists know that they use trickery, but sometimes they also believe that they are using genuine ability. So it's a mix, and that's where the ambiguity comes in. For some of the performers, you can't really be sure, and they typically capitalize on that because that makes them more interesting. Yuri Geller is one of those people. He has sometimes said that he likes to pe for people to keep guessing as mm -hmm. to is he real or not. And he doesn't really care what people think. And this is more common than you might realize. So again, we have this ambiguity, this sort of boundary crossing. Are they real or are they fake? And tricksters really live in that uh, area, especially. But aren't they just entertainers? Well, no. They're not? No, no. Some of them do readings for people, give advice. Not a lot, but there are some who will do private gatherings mm -hmm. and do fortune telling and, and various types of advice. So and why would some of it, those people. Uh, all right, Lester, we've got to take our, our first break. Please stand by. Exxon Nation, our okay. guest this hour is George Hansen. And his uh, website is www. 
tricksterbook.com. And we'll be back on the other side of this break as we continue here in the X Home from our broadcast center and studios in Hamilton, Ontario, Canada, on the iHeart Radio Network, Talkstar Radio Network, Mutual Broadcast Network, and of course, Simul Radio and Simul TV. I'm Rob McConnell. Don't go away. Explanation. Our guest this hour is George Hansen, and he is the author of The Trickster and the Paranormal. His website is the Trickster. I'm sorry, TricksterBook.com. Why? You know, like I, I've I've been doing this show now for 29 years, going on 30 years now. And when I talk about, you know, when we bring psychics on the on the show, mediums, to me, they're just entertainers who have found a little niche in today's society. How come you don't classify them as entertainers? Well, they are sometimes, but not always. Sometimes they're therapists. Wait a second, wait know, a second, hold on here. How can, how can a psychic be a therapist? Well, they advise people on how to live their lives. So why would anybody with half a brain in their head go to a psychic? Because some psychics have real abilities. Name me one. I am not going to endorse anyone. I have uh, been involved in testing a variety of people okay. who show that they have abilities in, under laboratory conditions. I'm not going to publicly endorse anyone or recommend anyone. Then Privately, why, I may. Then why here in Canada is telling fortunes against the law? I have no idea why uh, Canadians have that particular law. Personally, I think it's to our benefit because the nine times out of ten, every psychic that I've ever had on this show, it turns out to be anything but credible. And anybody with $12 and a deck of cards and the ability to use Skype opens up a website, calls himself a self a psychic. And isn't it possible that these people who are not trained as psychotherapists or therapists can actually do more harm than good? Well, some psychotherapists can do more harm than good. But they're and in licensed. Fact, they're, they're, in fact, there's even some evidence uh, in meta-analysis that suggests mm -hmm. the more training they have, the worse therapists they become. So you're a proponent of psychics? Well, not, je not all, and people have to be very, very careful. Uh, I would look for personal recommendations. What have they done with other people? Mm -hmm. uh, most psychics are not intentionally frauds. Some of them are, but most, and I've known hundreds, most of them are not. Most of them are quite sincere people. They may be misguided, but most are not out to make a bunch of money. There are some who do, and you have to be careful, no question. What does that tell us about society when people will go to strangers and, and pour their heart out and pay these people to listen to them? Well, uh, that's well, psychotherapists do that every day. But we're not talking about psychotherapists. We're talking oh, oh, oh. about we're talking about psychics here. We're talking about so-called wannabe people who will do anything to get a a buck, whether it's legitimate or not. Well, no, that's not who we're talking about. I made that very clear. Well, that's uh, why I'm talking about. Ago. There are some who do, no question, but not all of them, and not most of them, in my experience. All right, so what differentiates between a legitimate psychic and a trickster? Okay, uh, this is a long conversation. Okay. Uh, it had, you know, when, in, when I was asked to provide a list of questions and uh, topics to talk about, I need to talk about the trickster figure to, so to people understand it. Because, frankly, you're talking, about, you're talking like an old white man. There are other ways of understanding these phenomena. But I am, I am first, first of all, sir, I, I take your comment about being an old white man very racist. And you know I'm what? An old white and man. you know I'm what, an sir? Do you know what, sir? I don't put up with my guests being 
nasty, and racist. So we're getting rid of you. Can you imagine the nerve, the gall of this moron? First of all, he sends us information about his uh, his bio. He sends us this. Okay, right there. I don't know. I don't know if you can see it or not. I ask him to give me his definition of a skeptic, and he can't. Obviously, he doesn't understand that questions that we ask ask for are just guidelines. If I think somebody is full of crap, like I honestly thought this guy was within the first three minutes of our conversation, I will challenge. I will, I will go after him. And when you get some idiot who wrote a book that is called The Trickster and the Paranormal, well, first of all, in my opinion, he's the trickster because he's tricking you into giving him money and then this moron is, is saying, well, wait a minute, you know, psychics are... Our psychotherapists are ther- You're an idiot, mister. You are out to lunch. Where the hell did you come from? And then to have the nerve and audacity to say that I sound like some old white man. First of all, that is a racist comment, sir. I do not put up with racism here on my show, whether it's directed at me, anybody that is affiliated with this show, or any member of the public. Man, you've got your head so far up your your butt, it's not even funny. You call yourself a... uh, What the hell does he call himself? Oh, then, then I said, so as a professional magician, well, I'm not a professional magician, then why do you belong to the International Brotherhood of Magicians? Oh, boy, yeah. And uh, let me see. Uh, However, he is primarily interested in the paranormal in its social context. Well, obviously he's not, because I asked him about the the sociological implications. And, well, wait a minute, I don't want to talk about that. I want to talk about my book. I want you to give me a whole bunch of advertising for my book for nothing. And no, it doesn't work like that. If anything... You shot yourself in the foot. You showed people your true colors. You are a racist, sir. And I'm being very generous when I call you sir. Where do you come off talking about anything? You know, the questions that are here are just bullcrap. They're just leads. And like I said, no matter who you are, and I've had Yuri Geller on this show. I've had the amazing Kreskin on this show. I've had psychics that I've nailed to the cross on this show. And if they were any good, and some of them are very well known, If they were as good as they claim to be, should they have not known that I was going to nail them to the cross when I caught them in a lie? We had Sylvia Brown booked on this show three months after the date that she died. Should she not have known she was going to die? How come these psychics aren't rich? I mean, besides the ones that take you to the cleaner. Uh, using your credit card. What, how come they don't go out and find a gold mine? Or why don't they get the best stocks? Oh, wait a minute. What, what is that old cliche? They don't do that because that is not what their gift is for. Their gift is to help other people. Hallelujah. Psychics. Let me, let me, just, let me just put this in a nice way. Psychics, to me, are bottom feeders. Mediums, to me, are bottom feeders. Channels are bottom feeders. People who believe in life after death communications are bottom feeders. And I'm talking about these people who charge people who are 
at a very low point in their life because they have lost someone. They are grieving. But you know what? For so much money, I'll connect you. These are bottom feeders. Psychics are bottom feeders. John Edwards was proven to be a fraud. The Long Island medium, she's been proven to be nothing else but a bottom feeder. And if it wasn't for the Internet, and I'm going to say it again, the world's largest septic tank that mankind has ever created because there's nothing, there's more crap in it than there is anything else. And these stupid uh, reality TV shows who not only promote these bottom feeders, but other aspects of the paranormal as well. Giving it, they really believe what they're doing is they're legitimizing the claims made by these bottom feeders. What they're doing is they're ripping off society. They're playing the act of a god who can cross the time-space continuum and talk to those who are departed on the other side. Uh, for a price, that is. The para industry is a major multi-billion dollar industry now because people believe in the bottom feeders of the world. Sorry, guys, that doesn't wash here. It never has, and it never, ever will. If you don't like the truth as I see it, change the channel. No hard feelings. There's plenty of morons out there that you can tune on the internet. What's it called? Podcasting? Yeah. Or go onto a YouTube channel. My God, you'll find exactly what you're looking for. Except the truth. Here, I ask for answers. I want answers. And I demand the truth. And when you start sidestepping me, when you start doing everything you can to avoid my questions, and then you have the nerve and audacity to call me a, an old a white, an old white man? You too are a bottom feeder, Mr. George Hansen. I'll be back on the other side of this break as we continue here in the X-Zone from our broadcast center and studios in Hamilton, Ontario, Canada. You can always find out what's happening on the X-Zone broadcast network at www.xzbn.net. And of course... You can always find out what's on the Exxon TV channel on Simul TV for channel number 21 at www.x, I'm sorry, simultv.com. I'm Rob McConnell. Don't go away. <music> 